Oh, I uh, did. S I uh, contacted this uh, Yogya devotee, who is another devotee, who is the teacher of the one of Rasa Vilas, which is Sri Radha Raman. And he was so happy. He, I can read what he wrote me. He said. He said, I will be so happy to send the process for conducting a Yanga for Gita. I will email you the procedure tonight. He said, once your holiness and the devotees have had a read, I will be more happy than happy to take them through any questions on Zoom. I am on holiday until January 4th. So, so he's, uh, he was really inspired when I asked him. So we ha still have to wait for the yeah. So um, I mean, he is he is he's the one that teaches everybody in the UK how to do yagya. So all the yagya people in the UK have generally learned from him. He's like Sri Radharaman. He's also your god brother. Yeah, he's uh, really qu quite a dynamic personality. And he has so many amazing abilities he has. Huh? Yeah. I mean he'll tell you he'll give you the yagya as it is. <laughs> so let's see. I just hope hope he continues. Mr. G G M G and there oh G and M. We like M G better. <laughs> GM is General Motors. And MG is MG is my garage. <laughs> MG used to is a car in in America called an MG. Yeah. So it's the smallest car they make. It's a sports car. It's called MG. Real small and fast. Okay, so we're up to six, plus five is eleven. <laughs> no, five, six, five, six. There's a. They got you outnumbered. There's more up there than down here. <laughs> Let's see. What should I play? My harmonium. Or, or, or harmonica, or the guitar, or maybe the the, the bass drums. But if somebody has some cymbals, I'll try those. <laughs> Triangle. Guru Sado Shastra. <laughs> Play the triangle. Okay. Thank you. These are the the best of the worst. <laughs> Okay, so where's our where's that devotee who always comes and doesn't say anything and just sits over there? He lives in the same place I live. Yeah. Not no, not lady. She's a man. Yeah. Oh, he's in the kitchen. Oh, okay. Let's let's bring the class into the kitchen. Hmm? He's hearing. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Anyway, I hope he doesn't get absorbed in the pories and forget about the translation. <laughs> Okay, we got we got a lot of ladies here. One. <laughs> Nowadays, people just come and send their representatives. The rest stay back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? What song should we sing? I can't get no satisfaction. Or that house of the rising sun? 
Okay. Okay, here comes Krishna's best friend, Uddhava. <laughs> yeah, that's his name, Uddhava. Uddhava the friend. Meet, meet yeah. Now he's Krishna's friend. Uddhava Mitra means Krishna's friend. I mean, like a guy like that, you just don't want to make your enemy because he's real big. <laughs> So you have to make him a friend. <laughs> yeah, if they don't, if they don't take it, he just puts you in a headlock. <laughs> Krishna's friend. Krishna's friend is the Sudarshan chakra. <laughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihadiraya Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihadiraya He jaya gopi janavalabha Giri var dhahi He jaya gopi janavalabha Giri var dhahi He jaya gopi Ye sodanandana bhaja jana hanja dhaya Ye sodanandana bhaja jana hanja dhaya Jammun thira hevan chahiya unum Jammun thira hevan chahiya munadim Edhar adham adhavam Kunja bihani raya Maravan. Gopi Jana Balavam Edhaya Gopi Jana Balavam Gary Varadhan Gary Varam It is so Nandana Raja Jana Hanjana Yasaranandana Prajadana Andana Jimun Pira Havan Chahadiyam Jimun Pira Havan Chahadiyam Jai 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Ahade Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna Hari Hari Om Ram Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari Hare Hari Ram Hare Ram 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 Hari Krishna Krishna Nittai Gaur Hey Jaya Panchatatva 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 Jai Panchatatva Jai Jai Ghora Nithai Ghora Nithai Ghora Nithai Jai Ghora Nithai Jai Giri Govardhan Giri Govardhan Giri Govardhan Jai Giri Govardhan Jai Bravo Pada, Bravo Pada, Bravo Pada, Srila, Bravo Pada. Srila Bravo Pada, Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bhav, Srila. Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're going to read verse 34 and 35 and then do the purport for 35. Chanchala himana Krishna Pramati Balavadridam Tashyaham Nigraham Manye Vayur Iva Saduskaram Chanchalam Himana Krishna Pramati Balavadridam Tashyaham Nigraham Manye Vayur Iva Saduskaram Chanchalam Himana Krishna Pramati Balavadridam Tashyaham Nigraham Manye 
Vayoriva Suduskaram Chanchalam Flickering He Certainly Mana Mind Krishna O Krishna Brahmati Agitating Balavat Strong, dridham, obstinate, tasya, it's aham, I, nigraham, subduing, manye, think, bayo, of the wind, eva, like, suduskaram, difficult. So this whole chapter, practically the whole chapter is on the mind, controlling the mind and different processes for controlling the mind. Krishna speaks this, this, so this, this chapter is one that devotees should read and really try to understand deeply because it's one of the, the whole principle of devotional services is, is learning how the mind works and how learning how to control it. So, Arjun says, the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to do it, I think it's more difficult and controlling the wind. So after giving so many instructions on mind control to Arjun and from different angles of vision, and Krishna um, gives him the, um, the whole yoga system in the previous verses, Astanga Yoga, and which is the mystic yoga system. Now after hearing everything, and this is Arjuna's response. Um, he doesn't really feel very inspired by all the instructions, knowing that the wind is just very difficult to control, and all these processes don't seem to be uh, powerful enough or adaptable enough. In other words, it becomes very hard to adapt these processes. So then Krishna, in the next verse, and we'll read that. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Asam Sayam Mahabaho Mano Durnigraham Chalam Abhyasena Tukonteya Vairagena Chagrihate Lord Krishna said, O mighty armed son of Kunti, it is un undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment. Prabhupada's purport. The difficulty in controlling the obstinate, mi uh, obstinate mind as expressed here by Arjuna is, accepting, is accepted by the personality of Godhead. But at the same time, Krishna suggests that by the practice and detachment, it is possible. What is that practice? In the present age, no one can observe the strict rules and regulations of placing oneself in a sacred place, focusing the mind on the super-soul, restraining the senses and mind, observing celibacy, remaining alone. By the practice of Krishna conscious, however, one engages in the nine types of devotional service to the Lord. The first and foremost of such devotional engagement is hearing about Krishna. 
This is a very powerful transcendental method for purging the mind of all misgivings. The more one hears about Krishna, the more one becomes enlightened and detached from everything that draws the mind away from Krishna. By detaching the mind from activities not devoted to the Lord, one can very easily learn vairagya. Vairagya means detachment from matter and engagement of the mind in spirit. Impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. So where does Krishna say that? And where does he make that distinction in the form of a verse? Who knows? Impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. Who knows what verse that? It's in the Bhagavad Gita. Anyone? Bhagavad Gita scholars here? Okay. I'll read it for you. Yeah, you're right. And it's verse number five. For those whose mind are attached to the unmanifold personal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. So yeah, Krishna says the impersonal uh, 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 program of attaching the mind to the different me the mechanics of meditation is very difficult. And to make difficult is difficult and difficult and it's troublesome. And it also takes, even if you're successful, it takes a long time. <laughs> Okay, so, this is practical. By hearing about Krishna, one becomes automatically attached to the Supreme Spirit. This attachment is called pare sanubhava, a spiritual satisfaction. It is just like the feelings of satisfaction of a hungry man for every morsel of food he eats. The more one eats while hungry, the more one feels satisfaction and strength. Simply by discharge of devotional service, one feels transcendental satisfaction as the mind becomes detached from material objects. It is something like curing a disease by expert treatment and appropriate diet. Hearing of the transcendental activities of the Lord is therefore expert treatment for the mad mind. And eating the foodstuff offered to Krishna is the appropriate diet for the suffering patient. This treatment is the process of Krishna consciousness. Hmm. Om timirandasya gina jina salakaya chaksa unmilita mena tasmai shri guravena maha. So, yeah. So, for the last three days, we've been talking about different aspects of the mind, how the mind works, what the mind is in relationship to the soul, some of the principles for controlling the mind, the austerities mentioned, um, some of the uh, features of how the mind uh, tricks one to go this way and that way, um, how the mind is really quite mystical and no one really knows how much is in the mind. What we know about our mind is very little. We think we know our mind but actually we know very little about our mind. So all these things we've somewhat uh, discussed and, and exhausted, not really exhausted, but discussed. So here Prabhupada sums up after Arjuna is pretty much discouraged by the uh, um, different uh, recommendations that Krishna is giving him in order to control the mind. Krishna says, it is, I agree with you, it's, it's difficult, there's no question about that, but he says, and this is the thing, he suggests that by practice and detachment is possible. So these are the two principles, to practice and to become detached. In another place, it says constant practice. Here, um, this verse says, but it's possible by suitable practice. Hmm, so suitable is kind of a, a word that you need to describe. Suitable means in line with the recommended way to practice. 
nothing, you can't make up your own practice. You have to follow that practice that is given by the Acharyas and by Krishna through the, through, through the scriptures. <laughs> so that word suitable means what is recommended. What is recommended. <laughs> and detachment means detaching the mind from other things outside of that process. <laughs> so here's the formula. Um, the mind mm, needs that kind of discrimination in order to somehow understand what are these two categories. So therefore, there is two categories that are mentioned to understand what's favorable for the execution of Krishna consciousness and to understand what's unfavorable. That's called anikul, anukulena and pratikul. So one should know through reading scriptures and hearing from the spiritual masters what is the favorable way to execute devotional service and what is unfavorable. Uh, favorable means that one should be in the mood of accepting the mercy of the, the spirit Krishna by accepting the instructions of the spiritual master. Favorable means to apply those instructions according to time, place, and circumstance. Favorable means to associate with devotees and avoid uh, non-devotee association. Favorable means eating Krishna prasadam and avoiding food that is not of that category. So there's so many things within the category of favorable and unfavorable. In fact, the unfavorable categories are always more. And therefore, this is a great science of bhakti. But then... Prabhupada really makes it quite easy by saying this process really requires constant hearing. Both the instructions of the Lord coming through these, the different sources that give instructions as Guru, Shadu, and Shastra. And at the same time, um, uh, hearing about the name, the name, fame, qualities, forms, activities of the personality of Godhead, which fixes the mind upon the, the transcendental realm and gradually develops attraction for that realm through the process of hearing. But then again, there's one really easy way to control the mind, and that's learning how not to listen to it. <laughs> and that's mentioned in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in the uh, story of Jad Bharat, um, where... Um, Prabhupada describes in one sentence, he says there's one easily one easy way by which one can control the mind, and he gives you a one-word answer, L neglect. Don't listen to it. <laughs> uh, by learning not to listen to the mind, we actually start to control the mind. And then gradually, we start to listen to the words of the spiritual master and the words of Krishna coming through different sources. So then, by learning how to not listen to our mind and keep that focus on the instructions and the shastras like that, the sources that give the direction, then the mind becomes controlled or fixed. So it's like um, vidis and nishetas. Nishetas, nishetas means things not, not, not to do and vidis means things to adopt things to apply. But the bay to the e and so in the in the in the previous I'm sorry, in the previous um, um, uh, purport, Prabhupada says, and it is even more difficult to capture the turbulent mind than can capture the blowing wind. But the easiest way to control the mind as suggested by Lord Chaitanya is chanting Hare Krishna the great mantra for deliverance in all humanities. The method prescribed is Savaya Mana Krishna Padada Vindayo. One must engage the mind 24 hours a day. So devotees should practice to chant as much as possible. When you have quality japa in the morning, then the mind becomes easier to fix your mind on Krishna throughout the day. And then that, through that fixing your mind throughout the day, you remember to chant Hare Krishna. So we can also, so we should try to see 
how to remember to remember. This is the process. To remember something is hard, but to remember to remember what we have to remember is the process for remembering. So I have to remember to, to remember Krishna. And I have to remember to forget those things that are not part of remembering Krishna. <laughs> so we have to remember to remember and remember to forget. Sounds complicated? No, it's easy. <laughs> so these are the two categories. Forget those things that are not in line with Krishna consciousness. But the easiest part of the remembering process is just chant Hare Krishna. We can do that any time, any place, anywhere, any moment. And when you get actually skilled at remembering Krishna, you actually chant. You can actually chant Krishna while you're sleeping. And as soon as you wake up, you immediately start chanting. Before you start taking rest, you actually are chanting until you actually fall asleep. So you're always chanting. And that way you're always connected to Krishna. And another way to solidify that memory process is focus on Krishna's lotus feet, which are quite attractive and the source of all auspiciousness. To remember Krishna's lotus feet and to chant Hare Krishna at the same time, that is bringing the consciousness completely into the realm of transcendence. Because Krishna's lotus feet are as powerful as chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <laughs> So that Prabhupada also recommends that throughout his talks that if you can focus your mind on the lotus feet of the Lord, you're always in the position of transcendental consciousness. And he also says in relationship to that, that if you simply remember Krishna's lotus feet, you will never be, uh, what's the word? You will never be baffled, confused, on the execution of your devotional. You, you'll, never be, you'll never be impeded. You'll always know what to do at every moment when you remember Krishna's lotus feet. So that's very powerful. So these two formulas, both in relationship to the transcendental nature of Krishna, the holy name and Krishna's feet, are the process for him. And of course, Prabhupada says hear, but hearing means Chanting, and chanting means to hear what you chant. So when we hear, we're actually hearing what we're chanting, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hmm. There was that story where there was one man who was living in Jagannath Puri, and uh, he was really very much addicted to chanting Hare Krishna. He couldn't stop chanting. One day he was thinking, you know, every day I go down and I take care of bodily activities and I have to go to these unclean places, but I'm always chanting. So I'm bringing the holy name into these unclean places. That means I'm bringing Krishna. So I think I'm going to not chant when I'm taking care of bodily needs. But then he's thinking, but how can I do that because I'm always chanting? So he decided to hold his tongue. So he was with his hand, he was holding his tongue while he was walking. So one young boy, he was about 10 years old, his name was Gopal. He saw the, the man, he said, hey, why are you holding your tongue? And then he explained. And the boy said, no, no, that's okay, because Krishna's name is, you know, pure. It cannot be affected by anything dirty, so you should always, you can bring it anywhere. And so Lord Chaitanya just happened to be nearby when this boy was instructing this person. So he said, oh, that was, you are, uh, you are speaking like a guru. And uh, then he said to the boy, what's your name? He said, my name is Gopal. He said, I'm going to give you a second name you'll be known as Gopal Guru. <laughs> so at 10 years old. And later, that person became the famous Gopal Guru Goswami, who was the spiritual master of Vakrishwar Pandit, one of the intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya. 
So this was an indication that, yeah, we can chant anywhere, anytime, any place. The holy name is always appropriate for any situation like that. And when you're chanting, you're protected. I, I was remembering just today, tonight when I was in my room, I was chanting. And I was walking and doing things and chanting while I was doing things. And then there was something on the floor that was quite dangerous. So I stepped on it while I was chanting. But when I was chanting, because I was chanting, my weight didn't go on to the object. As soon as I felt the object, the holy name just removed my foot and I didn't press down on it, although I was walking. And, and then I realized, it's because I'm chanting. Otherwise, if I wouldn't, I would have walked right on it and I would have probably injured my foot. Hmm. It was a piece of wood that I keep to keep the door open in my room and it's got very sharp edges on the sides. So, yeah, I just lightly touched it while I'm walking. But I somehow, automatically, by Krishna's arrangement, because I was chanting, and I remembered what Prabhupada said, chanting relieves pain. And chanting will prevent you from getting the pain that you may encounter while you're, you know, living. So chanting is so powerful that it gives complete protection on all levels. Mm -hmm. So, because Krishna's name is directly Krishna himself. So, um, so we have the means by which to control the mind. So the means is ba basically two things, to hear the instructions of the spiritual master and keep our process, keep our connection with the hearing process through hearing about Krishna and devotional service. And then Prabhupada, uh, Krishna ends the purport, he says, yeah. And then Prabhupada, in another lecture, he says, this is the, of course he says it here, this is the treatment for the mad mind. <laughs> the mind is mad, the guy is crazy, he's just a lunatic. You have to tie him up and beat him. And that's what it says, Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says that. When you get up in the morning, you have to beat your mind a hundred times with the shoe, and then at night you have to beat your mind a hundred times with the broomstick. And then maybe you'll be able to control it. <laughs> it's a mad mind. <laughs> It'll go anywhere, do anything, think of anything, and become ridiculous. <laughs> it's just the nature of the mind. And we see... Um, I have some old statistics. These are not so updated, but I'll read some of them so you can get a little better idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These statistics go back maybe 20, almost 20 years. It says here, from 450 million mental or behavioral disorders worldwide today. That was 20 years ago, 450 million. The World Health Organization proclaims that in the 21st century, the disease that will cause the most suffering and death is mental illness. Of all types of illness, depression is number one. It's the leading cause of disability and it ranks fourth globally as a burden of disease. In the USA, $43.7 billion per year are lost due to people suffering from depression. Over one million suicides per year worldwide. It's higher now, that was 20 years ago. Over three quarters of those suicides are due to people suffering from depression. The number one cause of suicide in the United States is depression. Nine, about 10% of the U.S. population suffers from depression, and 15% of those are not treated properly. 20% of young people who die are from suicide, and which is caused by depression.
depression. Suicide is, is the leading cause of death bet between the ages of 15 and 25 years old. A half a million youth attempt suicide each year. 10% 10 succeed. April, May, and December are the year, months for the most suicides. Welcome to December. Here we are. April, May, and December. <laughs> well, you, you know, that might require some discussion anyway. Hmm. Americans spend more money on gambling than they do on groceries. <clears throat> yeah. And there's different kinds of depressions. And unipolar, bipolar, and all kinds of things. So the mind is just a mad, is mad. So when Prabhupada said mad mind, he's not just trying to, he's making a point, the mind is. So this is the only way you can control the mind like that. Uh, when the devotees were in uh, 55, uh, 55th Street in New York, they had gotten this building, 11-story building in the middle of Manhattan. You look so beautiful when you sleep. <laughs> but try to look beautiful later on. <laughs> okay, so... We sometimes we see that oh he looks so peaceful yeah he's sleeping yeah that's why <laughs> otherwise he's crazy <laughs> so we had this building eleven stories and before that it was a place where um, it was a a convent. Convent means a uh, like an ashram for women who are in the Christian church, and many of those ladies um, committed suicide. So on the eleventh floor, especially the two higher floors, there were always ghosts there. So the devotees were really being harassed by the ghosts. I mean, really a lot. So three devotees jumped off the building from the top to commit suicide. And one devotee, when he jumped, and he's on his way down, he said, oh no. In other words, he was impelled to jump, not because he actually wanted to, but there was some negative force that actually was forcing him to do this. And then later, of course, it was too late. And Eleven stories are, I mean, that's high. 11-story buildings are pretty high. So we had this, but we had to give it up after time because the ghosts were, we couldn't get the ghosts out. The devotees tried so many things. And we had so many problems with that building. Eventually we sold the building. Some people say we shouldn't have sold it, and some say we were glad we sold it. But anyway, it was, you can see that how the subtle mind that you find even within the atmosphere is very influential, can be influential in affecting how you do, how you think, or how you even chant. Or so always make sure your environment is free from any negativity and by keeping, I don't know, it's good to keep like Bhajan's playing. One of the things that's recommended at night to keep the serenity within the atmosphere is to play bhajans throughout the night, like Prabhupada's bhajan. They do that in some temples. Some devotees do that individually. Because the material world is so contaminated with so much negativity and different degrees of negativity. So you wonder, sometimes we wonder, you know, why is it, my, my mind going to these crazy thoughts or... It's just the atmosphere is so bad in Kali Yuga. It's just a bad atmosphere. And then again, if, we were, if you're around the non-devotees, that atmosphere becomes stronger like that. 
So we should always be careful. Therefore, one should always remember Krishna, whatever you're doing or wherever you are, and especially chant the holy names. And you can practice chanting. As we say, we have to remember to remember. So we pray to Krishna, please let me remember to remember you. And please let me remember to forget those things that are not in relationship to my spiritual advancement. Like that. So the mind, yeah. So in that verse, in the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says there's one easy way to control the mind, and it's learning how not to listen to the mind. <laughs> like that. So always see what thoughts come into the mind and then learn how to, to throw the ones that are no good immediately out and keep the ones that are spiritual. Like that. The mind will feel happy, the mind will feel depressed, the mind will feel, you know, it'll start dreaming about the future, complaining about the past, complaining about the present. <laughs> the mind will go everywhere. It's just the way it is. And it'll pick up different things. So, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a very powerful it's very powerful. But Prabhupada says in one lecture, it's very powerful, but it's not real. Interesting. In the le one lecture he says, when he talks about the mind, there's a whole series of verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Read those verses. It's from 5th Canto, chapter 6, verses 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, Prabhupada gives classes on verses 3, 4, and 5. And in verse number 3 he says, The mind is very powerful and one should never trust the mind. But he says it's not real because it's simply a covering that we have accumulated over our spiritual mind. The material mind is simply a shadow covering of the real mind. And so to destroy that covering is the process of transcendental sound vibration. <laughs> and then we awaken the natural spiritual mind, which is clear, pristine, and reflects the soul's nature and also allows, that pure mind allows us to approach the Supreme Lord in devotion. Okay, so here's these are some things we can think about. What did you want to remember? Those, yeah, verses 2, 3, 4, and 5. All these verses are on the mind. <laughs> in the 11th canto also, there is really, really some really, a whole, in, verse, in chapter number 20 of the 11th canto, Krishna speaks directly about the mind. This is Krishna speaking. This, these are really powerful verses. So, with a little research, you'll find that there's a lot of verses directly speaking about the mind, like that. And this whole sixth chapter is, I could give you some more references. I think I have my reference thing here. Um, yeah, from Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter Canto 11, verses 23 through 45 is on the mind. 11, 23 through 45, and then 47. Um, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, verses 11, um, Canto, uh, Canto 5, verses 11, I'm sorry. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 11, Verses 11, Verses 15 through 17. The, the entire chapter of Canto 5, Chapter 11 is on the mind. And uh, Raghunath Das Goswami's Manashiksha. These are prayers directly to the mind. The austerities of the mind we did last night. Chapter 17, verse 16. Um, also, 15, 7. Srimad Bhagavatam, 
uh, 5.18.12. And then in Bhagavad Gita, there's a whole series of verses on the mind uh, from chapter 2. 2.53 all the way up to 2.64, like that. And then onward to 2.71. So these are some reference points. Uh, Brihat, what else? Brihat Bhagavatam, Brita, yeah. Chapter 2, verses 86 to 107. So, I'm going to give these notes to anybody who wants them. And then there's about 10 pages here all about different aspects of the mind. So you can keep it, maybe you can print it and put it on the websites like that. So, this is available to anyone who wants it, who can use it, put it on the website. So, um, any questions or comments before we can cl close tonight? Udava, you got any questions? It's a good topic to explore. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Yeah, maybe I can share my experience. I don't know. You can correct. So what I like, I like to explore them, observe the mind, especially emotions. So by observing emotions, I can find the motivation. So then I can correct if the motivation which is behind the emotion is aligned with Shastras or not. That's good. That's nice. That's a little mental exercise, but you have to be careful <laughs> Why? when you find some of those things that are behind those emotions. <laughs> they may not be so unpleasant. If you dwell on the negativity, once you discover them, kick them out. But if you dwell on them, you know, you, they might just grow stronger. That is a risky process, but if you can do it with the power of the intelligence, then you may see, but if you find yourself going down, your mind is actually becoming un, uh, uh, disturbed by that, then you should stop it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You can also get depressed doing that. <laughs> Press? Depressed. Depression can come from that. When you just realize, <clears throat> you know, how, what are these emotions that are motivating these, and what are these thoughts that are motivating these emotions? Usually what I found that uh, motivations can depress me, but uh, 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 thoughts, motivations behind are usually really, really simple and irrelevant, like uh, like a childish. So mm -hmm. that's why for me it's easy to drop. Yeah. Well, good. If you can do that, that's a tough way to go, but if you can do it. The easier way is just keep the mind always in the in the positive situation and gradually these these emotions and thoughts change automatically or dis disappear automatically but some small amount of reflection on how to avoid certain things that keep coming back in our life One of the things that we sh we've, we have to see, we get the same results every day and we wonder why things are happening in the same way. And we don't want these results. And the answer usually is, is that we're thinking and doing in the same way, but still, and we're thinking, well, 
that if a, no, we're doing in the same way and thinking in a different way. We think that we can do it, we think about it differently, but we do it the same way and we get the same results. <laughs> Hmm. But I, I find as much as you can just chant. Sixteen rounds, Prabhupada said, is really just as a way to get you fixed in a regulated chanting. That's what it is. It's not a it's not a limitation. That's what we have to do. And that that allows us to make progress in chanting by having numerical vows. So Prabhupada established a numerical vow at sixteen. But in many lectures, he says, one should chant always. He said, well, 16 rounds, why not 16,000? So, as much as we can chant, keep doing that. Mm -hmm. And you will find that it's not going to interfere with whatever else you're doing in your Krishna consciousness. In fact, it'll enhance it. And by chanting, you'll get more and more ideas on how to execute your service, too. Why you're doing your service. But in this age, what I find is constant chanting helps you to avoid dangers and things that you want to avoid in this world. It just sums how Krishna directs you away from those things or protects you if you get exposed to these things. The chanting is, is actually life-saving in many ways. Mm -hmm. And we want to stay near Krishna, because if you, that's the best association. <laughs> so we can associate with Krishna through chanting. When Prabhupada was asked why, what do you get from chanting? We, we get chanting from chanting, but Prabhupada also said, we chant because we want to associate with the Supreme Lord. Hmm. Otherwise, we have to associate with that mad mind. <laughs> it's like, we got a choice. Okay, so we'll, we'll conclude here unless there's something else. Okay, so here, who wants, who should take this? I can give this to who? Okay, uh, go through it and, um, you know, maybe you can arrange to have it posted on the website. Yeah. Well, this is printed out from my, yeah. Send the files? Yeah, that's easier, right. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can just send the files. Yeah, take it for your personal use. I have the file, I have the electronic version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. So I'll send it to Ananta, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Don't listen to your mind, Ki. <laughs>